to really make the point, what I, what I want to do is step back a little bit and, and talk about what we refer to as the digital age. Um, you know, because I think it's very important that uh, today we look at marketing a little bit differently. And uh, this is a quote that I really love, and, and many of you will probably identify with it. Uh, when you silence your cell phone or have to turn it off, there's a little quiver that you get because you're used to the idea of being connected all the time, checking the email. We all are in this situation. Uh, and to a marketer, it's very important that they understand that um, and that the, the connection with the marketplace uh, and the consumer depends on that connection. So anecdotally, you would probably agree, if you look around and uh, rolling in a four-way stop, that people are checking their phones as they're driving. They don't talk in text campaigns. Uh, there's research out there about walking and texting and all the accidents that happen because of that. Uh, we're watching our iPads and our cell phones while we're watching television. There's the whole idea of multi-screens. We all have many devices, uh, and we know that anecdotally. But the data is, is pretty clear also on this issue that, you know, if you look at 90% of American adults have a cell phone, uh, many use phone to solve an unexpected problem, and 25% of owners describe the phone as something they can't imagine living without. We probably would all nod, nod our heads at that. But I just wanted to, to show you the data that supports the idea that we're all attached to these devices. So if we agree on that premise, uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit of a story about a conversation I had with a pediatrician recently. It was a multi-generation pediatri uh, pediatrics firm and had built this very, uh, very successful practice, but over the past four or five years, he'd noticed something very different. His business was going elsewhere. He wasn't getting the referrals. He wasn't getting... Uh, the business that he once, once did, he wasn't getting the patient flow that he once did. So uh, he was also talking about this competitor that he felt like was getting more of the business uh, and was growing while he was declining. And he was commenting about that person's social media efforts. They're all over Facebook. They're having a, they get a following. They're blogging. I'm not sure why they're blogging. You know, help me understand that. And as I uh, listened to him and he asked me, what do I do about this? You know, I started to get the idea in my head of someone called Jane. And, and Jane is someone I refer to in the book. And it could be Jim and it could be Joe. Whoever your brand needs to connect with uh, is who Jane really represents. But the idea is to, to think about your customer in a new light, okay, without the yellow pages, without the phone book. Okay, and the first thing is that, that Jane has friends. Jane is super connected on Facebook. She spends time uh, checking Instagram. Uh, she watches TV at night, and if she has time, she's on Pinterest uh, looking at home decorating ideas. She's hyper-connected. She also Googles everything. She might have kids. She might be in between games and soccer practices, and so when she has an issue, whether it's she needs to buy something or she needs to schedule something, she's using Google. You know, the data very much supports that. The other thing is that Jane is scary smart. She is hyper-connected. She is uh, going to get the best deal for her. She has her own self-interest with respect to, to interacting with other brands. So what you can conclude about Jane and what we encourage brands to conclude about Jane is that she wants her information for free. She doesn't want to pay for it, okay? Uh, she wants answers to her questions, solutions to her problems, and she wants them available to her. She wants them quickly. Uh, when she looks something up on her phone, she wants the answer immediately. I mean, we've all been programmed to expect that. And so, as brands, that's the, the playing field that we're now competing on. And the other thing is, if, if we're not addressing uh, her needs pretty quickly and doing it for free, then she has the ability to go somewhere else very quickly uh, online to find what she's looking for. So I, I want to present that as a backdrop because um, it's, it's important that we look at marketing now in that lens. Uh, and so if you're a pediatrician or you're an accountant or you have a large brand, you have to be aware of that transaction and that interaction that's going on with, with your consumers. And most of us are aware of that, but I think it's important to emphasize that as a backdrop. The other uh, concept to, to talk through a little bit and give you some backdrop on is the, the idea of content marketing, uh, which, how many of you are familiar with content marketing and, and how it works? A few of you have had some exposure to it. Uh, it's something I think you're going to hear more and more about, and you're beginning to already. Um, and it's really based on the idea that there's a lot of information out there uh, that's available to people. Uh, you know, you think about 
Every minute, the you know, statistics say 48 hours of YouTube video is created. Uh, two million Google searches, Google queries are performed every minute. Uh, and 204 million emails are going back and forth. The stats sort of go on and on, but the idea is that there's a lot of content that's being created and being consumed by people more and more. And the idea of, of content marketing is to leverage that and get the brand into the conversation. Um, the definition really of content marketing is the creation and distribution of content that informs and influences a particular audience, but does not advertise or sell. So if you think about that a minute, uh, that's a departure from the traditional marketing tactics where the idea is to just sell, you know, to advertise, to interrupt, whether it's in a magazine article or it's in a television uh, commercial break, let's interrupt and let's try and sell something. The idea of content marketing is to look at that a little bit differently, to look at it, actually flip it on its head. If you look around, you see content marketing all around you. This, this commercial I saw yesterday, uh, and you can look it up, but uh, when I grew up, uh, Michael Jordan was the big basketball player. He was the most popular. And the way that you used Michael Jordan and you leveraged Michael Jordan was to put him in a McDonald's commercial or a Gatorade commercial and to advertise. Be like Mike, go buy Gatorade, go buy uh, a hamburger from McDonald's. What LeBron James is doing, he's today's Michael Jordan, many people would argue, although that's a big, great debate we won't get into, uh, is Powerade, instead of saying go buy Powerade, they're saying go online, We've, we're going to show you one hour of LeBron James's workout so you can improve your athleticism or your performance or your fitness. And so Powerade, instead of saying go buy, is saying come connect with us through a message that we're delivering, through information that we're delivering. We're not even asking you to buy our product. We're just asking you to consume some information that we've made available to you. And so if you think about that, it's a very different approach. But keep in mind that Powerade as a brand and as a logo is very much present in, in the material and, and the effort. So if it sounds a little mystical, what I like to do is remind people that content marketing is not a new concept. It's a very old concept. And, and this is something, um, and if you're into this stuff, like I am, and you're sort of a geek about content and marketing, you, you go buy stuff off of eBay that existed and was used years ago. And so this is actually something that Jell-O used in the 1920s. And basically, it's, an it's a, uh, a non-advertising recipe book. And they would send people door to door, back when we did that, with these recipe books. And they're designed to fit inside a traditional recipe box, which we probably don't see many of anymore. And they're just simply recipes about how to use Jell-O in the things that you're doing. So this is one of the earliest examples of content marketing. They're not really selling, but they're saying if you want to make everything from Jell-O plum pudding to the, the apricot whip, you know, here's how you can integrate our product and what you're doing. And so you can imagine this is a new idea, and if you're a, uh, if, if you're a home cook in the, in the 20s or 30s and someone says, here's a new recipe book, uh, that might be something you'd be interested in. So it builds the connection to the brand, builds a connection to the audience, and, and ties the product in. Uh, there's another example. Uh, this is called the furrow. And the furrow is something that John Deere put out. And this is probably the earliest example. Uh, this has been going on for over a century. And what they did is created a magazine for the everyday farmer. Uh, and it, it's everything from weather information to... Here's what next season is going to look like from, from, a, uh, from the standpoint of the climate uh, to humor that's shared between farmers. And if you look in here, they, they distribute this through their John Deere dealers to uh, the users of their product. And it, it says very simply, if you're a farmer, you have a, go to your local John Deere, we'll make sure you get a copy of this. So they're not advertising, they're not selling, they're just informing and they're trying to influence. So, um, so the, the, the real point here is that it's, it's not a new concept. It's actually a, a very traditional concept. All sorts of ways for brands to, to be about content marketing. And you've seen some of these, and I think you'll start to recognize them when you see them, because they're not ads, but they're, they're informational pieces. You might see blog posts, you might see diagrams, YouTube videos, webinars, white papers, uh, podcasts, slide presentations all sorts of things that you'll see online that, that brands are putting out there with the hopes of getting you to engage with them. 
with information. The screenshot here is American Express Open Network. And if you're a small business owner or thinking about small business, um, you'll become familiar with this site because it's all over. It's, a, it's one of the greatest examples of online content marketing that exists. What American Express has done is created a hub of information uh, where they give you articles, a small business owner articles on every topic imaginable. Uh, everything from how to, how to uh, hire people to uh, how to generate financial statements to um, conducting webinars on topics that are important to businesses. And it's been very, very successful for them. Um, you, know, you think about uh, what the executive for American Express here says is in, in the idea that content is an important piece in all of our marketing efforts. Extending our messaging through content is a great way for us to continue to convert our customers from simply seeing a message to seeing our brand. So their effort is to give you information, to create that connection with you through value that they're providing, and then ultimately to bring you closer to their brand. Now, if you contrast that with the mailbox that you have, where you're getting offers all the time from Capital One and the shouting advertising that's going on, it's a, it's a very big, uh, stark difference between the two approaches. Uh, a couple of other examples to look at. Here's what Target does. They have a blog called a bullseye view. And their idea is to not sell you products, but develop content around the products. So um, you, know, you might go and see uh, tips for flu season out of Target. You're not going to see a blog post that says, come buy these over-the-counter uh, aids to help you get through flu season. Although that's inherent in the message, the approach is to use content around, not through. Dell is another example. And, I, and uh, they have blogs all over the place about whether you're a consumer or you are a business owner or an IT manager, we talked to some IT management in here before or earlier, uh, they're going to solve your problems through the blogs that they're writing. And uh, th I thought this was a very interesting comment out of the, the Dell online marketing team about the velocity of leads being, being so much faster than the other things that they're doing, which I think is very, very telling. It all comes back to the idea, if you think about the parachute again, of buying versus selling. And this is an old marketing adage of everyone likes to buy, but no one likes to be sold. Another way to look at it is the hunter versus the hunted. Um, and that leverage in the relationship when someone is pursuing um, uh, a product or a service, uh, like being on the airplane, uh, if you're selling the parachute, you want to be on the other side of that relationship when someone is really pursuing you and someone needs you the most. On the other hand, if you're trying to push the parachute and interrupt with the parachute into the, someone's daily life and they don't need you, then uh, your leverage goes way down and your probability goes way down.